and that is how easy to replace NVMe SSD on the A1278 MacBook Pro. Stay watching as we're gonna walk you through the whole solderless reassembling process. Welcome back to iBuff RCC channel. If you haven't watched the guide on how to solder the NVMe adapter to the A1278 main logic board, you can click here now. In this guide video today, we will not require any soldering skills, but if you basically know how to disassemble and reassemble the whole Mac safely, then this guide is pretty much easy for you. After finishing all soldering process in the previous video, the next step is you need to take the IPEX high speed cable from the upgrade kit and you need to identify the size of IPEX mill connectors at both ends of the cable and you should find that one end is smaller than another. Take the smaller size connector and plug it into the navbolt port just like you insert the LCD cable into the LVDS port. The specially designed IPEX cable in blue color is actually a group of coax wires with control impedance optimized for high speed PCIe data transfer. This ground coax surrounding the wires will prevent any external interference or EMI to the transmission lines and it serves as written current path for the signals in dielectric space. Its outer layer is also insulated with another blue coating to prevent short circuit when it's in contact with any components on the main logic board. Next, divide the cable routing to fit in between the electrolytic capacitors then you can reattach the left speaker and DC in jack and you need to make sure that it is perfectly fit without any bumps or bulging at all. Next, take the acetate cloth tape, cut it about 2 inch length and you need to bend the wires and make a sharp turn away from the CPU and create an S shape to avoid routing directly on the CPU heatsink. Tape the cloth tape on top of the electrolytic capacitors to let the cable maintain its shape. Routing for the rest of the cable should be made adjustable so that we can move it inwards or outwards in order for the male IPEX connector to reach the female ports on the distribution board. When we've found a suitable length for the cable, tape more acetic cloth to secure the cable position. Next, take the distribution board from the upgrade kit and you can use double tape to install the SATA SSD to the SATA slot here then use the screws provided to secure the drive. We will be installing the NVMe drive at a later time so now we will take out everything from the optical drive slot and you can keep the screws that come off with it. Take off the ODD cable from the optical drive and you need to straighten the flat cable to the other side and make a U shape at the center of the cable then install it to the SATA ODD port on the DB board. The DB board should come with two chassis screws with nut that will be the main support for the DB board of the same DVD screw holes here. Just one thing to note for the A1278 models, you should be careful with the SATA cable here as it is very delicate and it's very common for this cable to have micro crack issues so make sure you're not folding this cable too much or else you're going to end up replacing it. When you try to fit the DB board in, make sure that the speaker cable lies underneath the DB board then align the DVD screw holes with the DB board screws and tighten each screw until it gets in all the way through and holds the DB board firmly. Next, install the modified main logic board into the chassis as usual but before plugging in any cable or screws, insert the male IPEX connector to the NVMe PCIe port on the DB board. With the IPEX cable plugged in, the next step is to measure the connection integrity of the IPEX cable on the DB board and while this step is completely optional and requires you to have a multimeter, it really helps you to find the fault of the connections if your NVMe is not working correctly. Sometimes unexpected speck of dust are stuck inside the IPEX port of the distribution board or sometimes inside the IPEX port on the navbolt side itself. So this measurement will greatly save time for debugging process just in case your NVMe is not detected or doesn't reach the PCIe X4 link width as it should. Now switch the multimeter to diode mode, put the red probe to any ground pin and the black probe is used to measure the diode values on the exposed pads near the M.2 NVMe connector on the DB board and the diode values that you should get must be the same with the values on the navbolt one stated in our previous video. With that being said, this is the layout and values that you should get and slight deviations from these values are usually acceptable if you are using different brands of multimeter. 
The values can also deviate from what we stated here if your board is using Intel Core i7 instead of Core i5 like this one. And most importantly, make sure that these values are not shorted to ground or OL. Let's say if you get a OL reading on any of these transmission lines, say the R2D3N, first you need to take off the IPEX cable on the DB board, then clean both the male and female IPEX connectors using a toothbrush with alcohol and reseat the cable back into position. Remeasure the diode mode on the specific spot just now and check whether the value is still OL or it has already changed to 0.322. If you successfully eliminate the OL, then you're good to go. But if you still can't get the correct diode value, you need to repeat the same cleaning steps to the IPEX port on the Nevboot 1. Having a value of 0.322 simply means that the transmission line you are measuring is directly connected to the CPU at the PCIe controller port. While having OL value means the connection breaks somewhere in between the lines, and 0.000 means the line is shorted to ground. Next, you can begin to stuff all the screws for the main logic board and plug in all peripheral cables to their respective ports as usual except the battery and airport card cable. Plug in the 3.3V power wires for the NVMe on the DB board. Before plugging in the airport cable, this is the right time to insert the NVMe SSD of your choice into the M.2 slot and secure the drive using the screw provided. We have successfully assembled the whole Mac, but if you notice, we're not installing the setter bracket to its origin during assembly. This is because you will need an extra grinding and fitting to make way for the IPEX cable. Optionally, if you still want to use the standard bracket, you need to figure it out yourself where to grind and make further fitting for the IPEX cable. So now you can plug in the battery cable and make save one charger to jumpstart the main logic board. You should see the fan spins and hear the dong sound when the MacBook is turning on and immediately press the left option key for boot options. You should notice the NVMe LED indicator is blinking as the main logic board reads the NVMe drive during the boot option. If it doesn't blink, you need to shut down the Mac and clean the M.2 NVMe port, make sure the IPEX connector is fit in properly and have the correct test points values. So now you can boot into the USB installer and you can install macOS or Windows to any of these three drives. One more thing that we should do now is to boot into the macOS installed in the SATA drive and make sure the macOS you're booting is high Sierra and later. We need to verify the NVMe status such as NVMe link speed, link width and temperature. Once you get to the desktop, open the MaxFan control and for Samsung 970 EVO, it should read the NVMe temperature at the bottom of the list. You should also get an external display to work via mini DP port even though we already removed the Thunderbolt 1 chip. If your external display doesn't work, well, maybe you knocked off vital components for mini DP along the process. Next, click about this Mac, System Report, then click the NVMe tab, and you should find your NVMe drive with PCIe X4 link width at a speed of 5GB transfers per second. 5GB transfers per second is only PCIe 2.0, so when you perform NVMe speed test with the AGA system test, you will get a maximum of 1500MB per second of read and write. You can click on the next video to unlock the speed of PCIe 3.0 or 8GB transfers per second that will allow the NVMe to reach a maximum of 3000MB per second of read and write. That's all for now. Don't forget to click the subscribe button and see you again at iBuff RCC channel, reverse engineering at its best. Thanks for watching.